well today we have uh, a little different than the the normal council stuff here we've got a candidate for county legislature Saladin Allah am I pronouncing that right absolutely all right buddy welcome well, well, nice to meet you tell us uh, what's going on in the county what uh, first of all your your background and and uh, how you got to the point of saying I want to run for county legislature okay so aside from that I was born on the planet Krypton Krypton is a good place. Okay. There was one other guy I know that was born there. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, I've been a community activist and youth mentor here in the city for over 15 years now. So, you know, to go back a little further than that, you know, both of my parents, I was born in a family of seven children. So we had a large family. Are you and oldest? Youngest? No, I'm right in the middle. Right in the middle. So right. I've been doing a balancing act for many years right. now with my siblings, my older and my younger ones. Um, so I grew up in a household that was very socially, economic, and culturally conscious. My mother, when she was in her 40s, she received her bachelor's degree from Niagara University in psychology and sociology. Wow. And so I was very orientated around education at a young age simply because of that. On my father's side of the family, he was very culturally conscious. We have Tuscarora ancestry, so we spent a lot of time on a reservation growing up and he exposed me and my brothers and sisters to a lot of different insights about culture and the importance of your legacy and lineage mm -hmm. growing up. So I, I grew up in a household that was very open-minded and very in tune with community, family, and things along those lines. So a lot of the things that I've grown to do as far as youth mentor and community outreach has been just an extension of my foundation as a family. Excellent. Your, your, uh, that kind of work, was that with different uh, with actual groups or agencies in town or you did that on your own? or how Actually, you... this is, I went to college at Central State University, that's in Wilberforce, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Once I left college, I, I majored in therapeutic recreation. Once I left college, I came back to the Western New York area. And the people within my community that know me from my community outreach, my youth mentoring programs, one day back in 1999, I got up one morning and I committed myself to just doing youth mentoring. Woke up and I said, you know what? I'm gonna find a youth mentor uh, center and I'm just gonna go there and speak to the director and just tell them, can I come in at least once a week and just do a mentor program with the youth? I did that consistently for a year. I didn't care if it was rain. I didn't care if it was snow. Right. And after doing that consistently, for a year, I started to attend different community forums and get more involved on what was going on in the non-for-profit sector here in the city. Mm -hmm. When I started meeting different people and networking and they were seeing the things that I was doing voluntarily and just being proactive about making a change and a transformation in the community, people started to offer me opportunities to not only work in different recreational facilities, but also to design my own youth mentorship programs based upon the effectiveness that I was already showing just voluntarily. Mm -hmm. So one of the first programs that I started was called Life After School. And LIFE is just an acronym for learning interactive fundamentals every day. And I was doing this program for a couple of years over at the Niagara Arts and Culture Center. You mm -hmm. familiar with the Niagara yeah. Arts? Okay. Yeah. So I was doing a program there. From there, I was able to do other programs. One at the Niagara Falls Boys and Girls Club. Even prior to this, I was doing youth mentoring at New Jerusalem Church over right, on the so north end. Them out, yeah. So Good for you. now I'm at the point where I get contracted out or I get asked to come and do speaking engagements, youth mentorship programs with different organizations, not only in this community, mm -hmm. but also in communities in other cities, Philadelphia. Um, I was out in Seattle doing a speaking engagement at South Seattle Community College. Okay. And all of this was birthed from just the initiative, the proactiveness, and the, and the will to want to just help and assist. Not because you want notoriety, not because you want money, but because you see a need and you're fulfilling a need. So here I am today, and some people ask me a lot of times, well, why are you running for county legislator? What inspired you to get involved in local politics? And it was actually the people in the community and politicians who encouraged me because this is an election year. And they said, you know what? I see the community outreach you've been doing for years. I also see the youth mentoring that you've been doing. We need the type of person in our community that has the proactiveness to bring about change and transformation. Cool. So here I am. 
on the county le uh, level mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and your district. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your district and mm -hmm. we'll talk about what kind of things you think are needed and what you can do. Well, just being out in the community talking to people that I don't have the opportunity to see every day. One of the biggest challenges in our district, and I think that a lot of people relate to this in other communities around the country, is that our biggest challenge is, is ultimately apathy. People's lack and willingness to want to get involved in just not necessarily politics as, as a political process, but just getting involved in taking ownership stock and responsibility in their own communities. Mm -hmm. Last election year in 2011 for Niagara County Legislature, we had out of 6,000 roughly 150 registered voters, we only had about 997 people come out during an election year. So that translates into about a 16% turnout rate. And like I said, this is an election year. so. You can't turn your head without seeing anything about politics because we were voting on a national level as well. Right. So even under those circumstances, you had a very low turnout. So to me, that means one of two things. One, people are apathetic. They don't want to get involved. They don't care about what's going on locally. And number two, you have public officials who are not motivating the people and inspiring them to want to get involved and holding themselves accountable to the people who they're supposed to represent. Like I was speaking earlier before when we were off camera, going out into the community talking to different people that I don't see every day, some of the, the things that I've heard from people, like for example, there's a brother that I met and he was under the impression that the person that's serving in the seat right now as county legislator is someone that's been out of office years ago. And that's just how out of tune a lot of our voters actually are. Mm. So I find myself doing a lot of informative aspects. This is what the county legislator is. This is what the county legislator does. This is who you're supposed to hold accountable for that position and their roles and responsibilities to you as a community. So one of the things is a very important educational piece. People need to know not only how local politics can affect your community and how, they, how politics are affecting your community, but who are your representatives? Who can mm -hmm. you contact if you have this particular need or this is going on? How do you organize as lobbying groups in order to mm -hmm. represent your common cause and to advocate to get things done in your community? And like I said, on a local level, you have a lot more ability to micromanage what's going on in your community in comparison to the regional or the national level where you have people representing you that you don't see every day, you may not see in your lifetime. Right. So that's one thing that I've been encouraging people to do. You have to become more informed. Once you become more informed, then you have a greater level of transparency and accountability upon the people who are supposed to be representing you. So So you think there's a there's an opportunity for you with the current all right, let's who who's in the seat right now? Um, his last name is Steve, Steve. and it is going to be a three-party race, so it's me, um, another um, person that's running, her name is Kassara, okay. and Steve is the incumbent. And Owen right Steve, this is, uh -huh. is, he's the incumbent, he's running again, mm -hmm. and you believe you could create a better representation to your community than, obviously, because you've just said it. Yeah, and then I wouldn't be and here. And even though he's there. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that our community can do better and we deserve better, okay. especially for our children, because that's one of my main platform goals as far as youth outreach is concerned. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe, if, knowing the makeup of the rest of the legislature, you can you can make a difference? Do you have relationships within the group, or or uh, or doesn't that matter? You know what I'm saying? Do you, well, do you, do you need to? Do you alliances need to, matter. Right. Alliances matter, and as long as people are advocating for the same common cause, the needs of the community, needs of the people, the needs of our children, needs of our elderly, the needs of our veterans, as long as we can put those issues on the table where we can advocate for one common cause, it doesn't matter what your party affiliation is, okay, it doesn't matter yeah. what church you go to, it doesn't matter if your name is World Be Free or Meta World Peace. Yeah. You know, as long as we're advocating for the same common cause, sure. we should be willing and able to work for what's in the best interest of the people in the community. Definitely. Good, good. Um, your current 
what do you do during the day here? What are, what are you what are you doing now before you become a legislator here? What well, I'm you? campaigning, but uh, other than that, some of my professional background and experiences, I have my own publishing company, so I'm a writer. I publish ten books of my own, and wow. the subject matter is social commentary. So I write about everything from relationships to community to family dynamics to religion to culture, anything that I'm researching or anything that I've been inspired to write about. So with my company, I've been able to also help a lot of local authors get their books published, get their wow. stories out. And then just last year, a person from the community came to me and she knows that I'm a writer and she said that her grandchildren were interested in writing and wanting to learn a little bit more. She had initially went to a local recreation center to see if they had any programs available and there was no success there. She came to me. Within a week, I came up with a full eight week writer's program that I ran out of the Niagara Falls Public Library in the meeting rooms as well as the computer room. And this was all last year. I have a couple friends that works for Source Magazine. You familiar with Source mm, yeah, Magazine? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a couple friends that oh, work cool. for Source Magazine. And what I did is I put together a program to teach the youth about career fields in the writing industry. Also about the difference between editing, what typesetting means. And at the end of the eight week period, I published all of their writings in a book. Some of the, the youth wrote poetry. And this was a group of girls between the ages of 11 to 13, six of them. They came up with the name of the book called Our World. I didn't stop there. Once we publish the book, you can get it now off of Amazon. You can go to Barnes & Noble. You can go to any bookstore globally and order their book. Hmm. And then from there, I set up meet and greets because it was important for them. Once you're an author, people are going to want to meet you. Yeah, exactly. So I'm getting them encouraged and inspired at a very young age, not oh. only as writers and to look at this as a possible career choice but also to have them starting to think about being a producer at a young age and not just a consumer because a lot right. of people right. to go back into things about what we need in the community I think a lot of people are under the impression that we need someone to come in and save us mm -hmm. come and bring us this come and bring us that without looking towards each other for the type of support in a local economy where we can pull our skills and resources together in order to support one another and working with youth at a very young age and getting them orientated to think like producers is the goal so that once they get older and they start thinking about well I want to do this as a career I'm interested in doing this as a career they're going to be thinking more along the lines of I want to have my own business mm -hmm. I want to be a pioneer I want to continue a legacy of those that came before me, not just get older and want to get a job. Right. You know, right. so, Good feeling. you know, that's so, great. you know, that's, that's, and it took very little resources to put a program together like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't waiting around to say, I need a building or I need somebody to come in and finance me. No. We there have the skills, we have the minimal resources to get this done, and this is what you can produce under those circumstances. Sure. So, this is the type of mentality, this is the type of orientation that I bring to the table as a county legislator, which is not very traditional because no. usually a lot of legislators come together and they vote on legislation or they introduce new legislation, but you don't really see a person that is an activist, right. someone who has already established a track record in the community that is doing youth mentoring, that's doing community outreach, and that's able to bring that to the table along with the background with being able to determine policies and procedures because one thing about my background too is I worked at the casino for about eight years and I worked as a key office administrator in a slot department. So not only did I keep accountability for the keys that all of the employees use to get in and out of the machines, but I also... You're the guy with the keys. Now yeah. look, man, just one yeah. night, okay? Just one <laughs> night. Just, we, we work a little deal. That's all I need. I got a buddy of mine that actually where I keep saying, yeah. just give me that key once. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. So not only did I do that, but I, I constantly amended and modified or looked over the policies and procedures in the department. Also in the casino as, as a whole to see if they line up with the policies and procedures that, you know, the compact that the casino goes by. So 
You know, I have a lot of background and experience. You're not a guy that just sits yeah. and goes status quo. Oh, You're no. always looking to, to, uh, I to don't, move and shake. I don't yeah, let grass grow like, under my feet. That's cool. <laughs> well, uh, obviously now as a writing, we can expect to see a lot of uh, letters to the editor in the next uh, in the next couple of months. Yeah. The Hub yeah, is always right. a format. If you want to write something and send it oh. over to us, you know, we put up everybody's stuff. You oh, know, definitely. Uh, pretty much. Uh, and uh, that. Um, what else we got? Anything else you want to last minute... Uh, thing that you didn't get in here? I mean, oh, I the purpose of this really just to get to know the person. This, yeah. is, uh, this is great. Um, well, the last thing I wanted to mention is one thing that I'm doing that hasn't been done in this district before, or county legislator, is our campaign team has created our own party line for the general election. And it's called an independent nominating process. So if you get enough signatures from people who are registered voters in your district mm -hmm. that haven't signed anyone else's petitions, you can create your own party line. So the party line that we've created also for the general election is called the Niagara Youth Party. And the four fundamental principles or the pillars of the party is youth out outreach, obviously, localism, and localism um, is basically the idea that we should invest in each other first, local first, build a local economy, um, support initiatives that lower the taxes on the tax base that we have right now by putting other people in homes in order to take away a lot of the pressure that a lot of the people feel, especially out in the LaSalle area. Mm -hmm. um, Nonviolence, which speaks for itself, and then health and wellness. Um, out of, in the county of Niagara, there's over 60% of the people in this county are either obese or overweight. So you have a, 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 a health issue here in the, in the county. And, you know, there's a lot of other things that I have um, in store as far as platform goals. And one thing I learned too with politics is you can't tip your hand a little bit too early because you have people taking your ideas That's and right. trying to make That's it seem right. like that they came good. up with it. So, you know, some of the things I speak about, generally speaking, and also people are interested in getting in contact with me to stay informed about everything that we're doing with our campaign. They can go to Facebook and Saladin Q. Alaf for Niagara County Legislature. They can stay informed and connected to our campaign every step of the way. And then also everything that I'm saying here on this show and everything that I post, they can go back and fact check it too. Cool. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because just going out in the community, a lot of people have been asking me the wrong questions. They've been asking me, what are you going to do? What do you hope to do? And I tell them straight up, I can tell you anything right now. And that's what a lot of people do. You know, they sell people hopes, dreams, and aspirations, and you turn around and look and say, that looks nothing like what you said you were going to do. So what I tell them is, ask me what have I done? Ask me what am I doing right now because that gives you a better assessment of what I have the potential and the tendency and the vision to do once I get in the county legislature. So if people want to be informed, they can go to my Facebook page. If they're on Twitter, they can also go to Twitter and it's the at symbol Saladin underscore 2013. They can stay informed there as well. And you know, I've just been enjoying this journey. It's been very educational. Cool. Very educational. Well, it's August, so we got what? September, October, mm -hmm. a couple more months. You know, mm -hmm. we want to see you again before November. Okay. You know, give us a little update on what's happening. Okay. And, I'm actually uh, in the primary, though. All right. Oh, I'm in the primary oh, okay. for September, and it's oh, going to wow. be a write in. All right. So, those people who are interested in voting for me, they're going to have to write my name in the actual ballot box because I did what you call an opportunity to ballot, okay. meaning I opened up the primary so people could vote for me. Me and our campaign team went out and got over 450 signatures of registered Democrats and working family party members okay. in order to open the ballot up so people will have to vote for me by writing my name I in see. the box. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Now we got to make sure they know how to spell it right. That's, oh, absolutely. That's the key. It'd be a lot better if your name was, you know, <laughs> Sam Smith. You know, exactly. A lot easier. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. Well, look, man, let's keep in touch. I mean, absolutely. it's been a real pleasure talking oh, with you, and let's hope that this is a nice too. launch for you here. All right? Thank you. Cool.